Good morning world! Today I have to at least try to make this video super fast because I've had to contend with heavy pouring rain, leaf blowers, I don't know how they're blowing leaves when it's there's a monsoon outside but okay and um, who knows what other noise producing issues we've had so again so I'm going to try as much as I can to stop talking and make this very very fast all right our topic for today is communication in times of tension a lot of uh, couples who have issues or come to couples therapy one of the issues they usually present with is communication and everywhere you go everyone's talking about communication importance of communication 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 but what what usually ends up happening is that all this communication talk is about communication during calm, you know, regular, happy, maybe not so happy, but normal times. But no one really focuses on communication when you're upset, communication when one person is yelling and one person and the other person has something to say. So today we're going to go over a couple things that you can do to help with communication when there is tension. And especially if one person is already at 10 and you still want to be able to work out the issue and get through it so let's get right on it the first thing you do is keep a calm tone um, this works first if your partner is already at 10 where their voice has gone up and one way to bring their voice back down is for you to be speaking calmly because if you're yelling and he's yelling or vice versa what happens is we end up in the battle of the wills. Who can yell louder? Because the louder I yell, the better I am heard, or at least that's the perception. But if one person is yelling and the other person finds a way to stay calm and keep that cool tone, it helps the other person. It's a slow process, but it still helps the other person bring themselves back down because how much of an idiot do you feel like when you're sitting there yelling at someone who is doing everything possible to stay calm but just that soothing voice tone it really helps so it's important to even if your partner is yelling at least try and of course if the yelling has not started keeping a cool tone encourages your partner to also keep a cool tone so soft voices allow people to listen it allows people to pay attention it also limits or at least reduces that intensity of we're having a fight i have to be in battle mode i have to be whatever it is that happens when people get into a fight so calm tones reduces that intensity so keeping it keeping your voice as low as you can helps second is staying in close proximity and maintaining eye contact Another reason for that is that the closer you are to the person, the less likely you need to be screaming at them because they're right there. They can hear you. You can speak in your normal tone. The other part is that when you are there and you're looking at the person, it's easier to remember that this is my husband. This is my wife. This is this person I love as opposed to when you're way across the room or on the other side and you're not really paying attention to the person where anything that wants to fly out of your mouth can fly out of your mouth but when you are right there face to face you have to be remember you have to be um cognizant of who this person is when you're looking that person in the eye it's like um as much as you may have you may be angry you're reminded that you love this person and um sometimes if the other party even is not is the one that's already at the elevated one thing you can do if you that's of course assuming that you know your partner and it the situation is safe because if your partner is that type where when he or she gets angry stuff stuff fl starts flying off the shelves and things are being thrown of course i'm definitely not recommending that you go in and be close to this person because you, we don't want you to get hurt and of course that's a whole other issue that needs to be addressed as well but assuming that it is safe being close to the partner is a great is is good to keep the situation 
as calm as possible. And some people, most people have a soothing spot. That place where, you know, you can, if you touch their hand, you touch their arm, it's something like a gentle touch that helps a person calm down. Use that. Now, I'm not talking about some kind of something sexual where you, you're having an argument about whatever it is. And next thing you know, you're trying to know, not like that. A soothing touch, like a touch of the arm, a touch of the hand, um, even holding your part, your partner's hand, just a way of you calming them down. And that action actually helps you stay calm because if you're trying to touch someone with a soothing touch, it's kind of hard to do that if you're, oh, but it, you have to keep yourself calm in order to be able to calm them down. So soothing touches are very nice and very helpful. The other part is acknowledging the person and acknowledging what they have to say in arguments or disagreements, whatever you want to call it. Both parties want to be heard. And if the per if you acknowledge what the person has to say, um, they feel heard, they are more likely to be responsive to whatever it is that you have to say. They are more likely to be amenable to working out whatever that issue is. They are more likely to respond to recommendations that you may have, requests that you may have. But if the person does not feel heard, then it's almost like you're not part of this conversation. You're not hearing me. And therefore I need to scream at the top of my lungs so that you can hear me. But when you acknowledge the issue, you acknowledge what the person has to say, it just brings them back down. So make sure that when you are having a disagreement or a fight, whatever it is that you call it, make sure that you take time to acknowledge whatever the part your partner's gripe might be, whatever you may, your husband or your wife's concerns are acknowledge them because even if it's not an issue for you let's say your husband has an issue with the kids staying up too late maybe you think eight o'clock is the perfect time for the kids to stay up but your husband said you know what the kids need to be in bed at seven acknowledge that it doesn't mean that you agree with it it means that you heard what the other person said it means that you um are at least listening it means that, you know, it may not be my opinion, but I understand that is your opinion. Acknowledge the per acknowledging the person validates what they're saying. It's like, you know what? You may not agree with it, but you hear it. So give that validation. Acknowledge and don't, do, don't just, okay, yeah, maybe he's right into it, doing it in the back of your head. No, verbalize it. Say it. Yes, I hear you. Yes, I understand what you're saying. And then that will give you time to maybe bring up the count your point, your own point. Okay, what if uh, we did this? What if you can bring up suggestions or explain your viewpoint? But not first, not make sure you acknowledge the partner. Um, with the fourth one would be choosing your words very, very carefully during times of disagreement when it's that moment of every person wants to just say things and sometimes you get angry and depending on your past history and how you grew up or how you've always handled conflict sometimes we say things that if we were thinking we wouldn't say and that's why it's important to choose your words carefully because even sometimes things that may go over unnoticed during calm moments are magnified when a person is angry. Make sure that you're not leaving room for things to be misconstrued or misinterpreted. Make sure that whatever it is you say is exactly what you mean. Choose your words carefully. Don't say things out of anger. Don't allow, try at least not to allow yourself to use let the situation get so volatile because you're angry and when things calm down that that puts you in a place where you have so much more reparation to do because you've caused more so so much damage to the relationship be very very extra careful with what you say 
And another thing is that um, with arguments, the word you, it's kind of like an automatic accusation. We want to avoid starting conversations with you. When, you st when the person hears you, they hear, oh, I'm being blamed for something. What you can do instead is use I statements. I statements are an opportunity to tell the person what you feel. And remember, you can't argue a person's feelings. So if I say that I feel sad, I feel angry, you can't tell me that I don't feel angry. So start the, your, try to start your statements, whatever it is that you have to say with you, how you feel, how you are impacted. And then tell the partner, okay, this is the behavior that makes me feel that way. And this is what I would like you to do. It's like, I feel blank when you do blank. It would help me if you blank. That way it's like, you're not just saying, hey, you need to stop doing this. You're just saying, hey, this hurts me. And this is what it is that hurts me. And this is how we could fix it. You give them an issue, you give them a cause, and you give them a solution. So as much as possible, use your I statements. And finally, accept responsibility for your part of the issue. We have a tendency to focus on, okay, who is the primary aggressor? You're not the cops that came in to break up a fight and have to take in the primary aggressor. This is you and your partner. Anytime you have a disagreement or you have a conflict, there is usually at least two parts, two people involved in it. So even if maybe your husband, maybe your wife was the bigger um, the primary aggressor or the, the bigger contributor to the issue, you most likely have some part in it. So make sure you are uh, accepting responsibility for your part in the issue. Don't just focus and leave it on, hey, this is what you do, this is what you did. Take responsibility for your part because when you take responsibility for your part, you're telling your partner, I'm not just putting it all on you. We're in this together. We are going to solve this together. I know that I contributed to this and I am willing to fix whatever it is my contribution was and we can work on fixing whatever it is that your contribution was. So make sure you're acknowledging and accepting responsibility for your own part. All right, so that is all we have for today. Um, I know I tried to be quick, but that didn't exactly work but I am long-winded, I guess. Anyways, again, that's all we have for today. Good morning, world. Have a great day.